What's up, everybody? Just want to say, first of all, thank you if you actually did uh, listen to my album, Reflect Part 1. I'm eternally grateful to you. I really am. All I could ever ask for as an artist is your ears and your heart. If you gave it to me, I don't know if you did, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I was thinking, contemplating different aspects of the project uh, after some of the feedback I heard. And, you know, obviously in the album, I'm talking about serious stuff. My disturbance with the new normal, the statistics of our youth, the anxiety, depression, suicide, the, the wild west of the internet age, the fact that corporations are willingly, openly manipulating young people, anyone for that matter, for a profit, and all the, the in-between of that on an individual level and a corporate accountable level. So obviously these things are what they are. And obviously I'm, I'm, I'm shedding light on them in a, in, a, in a dark but attentive way. And it would be easier to just... Uh, write that off as it is and you know someone once told me that it's better to light a candle than curse the darkness and i thought that that was i don't know who originated it but it's it's so profound because while i definitely talk about aspects of this in the album you know being still uh finding space for quiet embracing friends family community um turning off the phone getting up but like what what is a pragmatic step towards that because i think a lot of us in my experience, it's overwhelming. You don't know where to start because the new normal has been so inundating. It's been so suffocating and it's it's happened so damn fast that we we don't know how to step out of it, let alone have our own autonomy uh, with navigating a smartphone that's uh, in increasingly addictive, navigating apps that are increasingly manipulative and navigating... Um, the time of no room, as Thomas Merton would have referred to it, where we are so inundated, which is bad news, and never really having time to look within ourselves, X, Y, Z. So, so my point in bringing this up is I wanted to offer to whoever hears me out some, some steps that I have implemented that have really truly helped me in navigating the time of no room, the the wild west of the dinner, internet, dinner, dinner, dinner net age, internet age, if you will. And I wanted to offer them to you. So I'm just going to, off the top of my head, kind of give you what has worked for me. Take it as you will. So the first thing is obvious. You could delete apps. You could delete apps that aren't really adding true value to your life. And I would argue that's probably the majority of them. And it's a difficult thing to swallow because we it's habitual, it's obviously addictive. We may think we're getting something valuable off of them, but in, in reality, we, we aren't really uh, profiting spiritually, mentally, physically <laughs> for the sake of going on these apps. I'm not saying that you know you can't find useful information on YouTube, X, Y, Z, but when something is set up to grab your attention and keep it, for as long, literally infinitely as long as possible for them to make money. It's, you see what I'm saying? There's a rabbit, there's a bit of a rabbit hole there. So you almost have to go in with a, uh, with a, with a structured, you know, I'm gonna do this for X, Y, Z minutes. If, so, so if you don't delete the apps and you don't wanna cut off cold turkey because that, you know, that can be difficult and it can set you up for discouragement. Um, you could set times, you could set specific times in your day, like, okay, I'm going to set a timer for 10 to 20, whatever minutes. And I'm like, okay, at this time, I'm going to go search through YouTube and watch a video I like, or find a podcast, whatever it may be. But when the time's up, you know, you have to, having discipline is, that's, that's the key word here, having discipline to recognize, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought, <laughs> having discipline to recognize, you know, when enough is enough for yourself and setting up those boundaries and honestly testing yourself and learning what works for you. But you have to realize that at the end of the day, you have to create some sort of structure for that because if you don't, it's just going to be all impulsive whims. And we're not meant to live like that. It's we we're living so fragmentedly and never really delving into deep work, deep purpose, deep uh, conversations, interactions. So yeah, so you could delete the apps, you could set times, specific times in the day or the week that you do engage with these platforms. You could uh, 
you know, trade your time to be like, okay, wow, I spent X amount of screen time this week. I could realize that that's pathetic and I need to spend at least 10 minutes in the morning and night just in quiet and silent meditation and in reflection and kind of checking your conscience, whatever it may be that that's on your heart, right? So that could be something trading it for family time, trading it to, you know, instead of this, I'm going to call my friend. I'm going to catch up with my, with my homie and be like, yo, how, how are you? <laughs> like a real conversation. How's life? X, Y, Z, you know? So that's another thing you could do. And these are kind of just things off the top of my head. So if you think of anything else in your experience that's worked for you, please let me know. Uh, I think there's one more I wanted to add. Yes. Okay. So particularly when we're waking up in the morning and winding down, I don't like to, oh, you know what? I just thought of something else. You could uh, dis, uh, turn off notifications for the apps. It's like, what you know, what's the point of constantly being at the whim of whatever's going to pop up on your phone? That could be all day and it could be so fragmented. We never get anything done or have any time for, like I said, that internal recognition, reflection, encounter with ourselves, let alone other people. And it creates this, not to get into like the philosophical realm of it, because I'm so passionate about it, but it creates this existential uh, compounded frustration because we keep returning to something that has been proven to not satisfy it, but we think a little bit more is the answer. So we get that much more existentially and spiritually frustrated because we keep going back for more of something that is a, is a snowball effect of, of, of uh, lack of fulfillment. You know what I'm trying to say? So. You could do that, which is which is big, turning off the notifications. And I don't have any of them on because <laughs> I'm speaking. All my projects are paradoxically just releasing something and shedding light to it. That's so we don't need to go into that. <laughs> you already know this. So there's that. And then as far as as far as what I do in the morning and evenings, I put my phone in airplane mode. I don't even do not disturb. I don't even <laughs> I don't even let text come in. It's, you know, if unless something is an emergency. It's very rare that that's gonna happen in the morning or the night. So I, in order to do deep work, I, I go to bed, I'm winding down for bed at least an hour before bed, no screen time. And I think that's an essential thing because it's been proven that blue light is actually very disruptive to our brain. And doing anything that's wiring for our brain, reading intense articles, reading, uh, stimulating ourselves with scrolling, watching intense stuff at least an hour before bed, has been proven to disrupt your sleep. And we've seen statistics of insomnia as well, not only with young people, but to all of us who are addicted to streaming services, who who uh, are at the whim of corporate greed and manipulation in this, in this regard. So that's another thing I do. I wind down at least an hour before bed. I'm not, I'm not doing the phone at all. I'm not doing television. I'm not, you know, you could read something peaceful and reflective. You could journal maybe about your day. You could just sit and quiet. That's, that's, that's the most restorative in my experience It's just, sitting and being and and listening to god and being quiet and shutting up it's very it's very it's been very helpful for me um and in the morning as far as pro productivity keeping it in airplane mode at least for like the first hour or two of your day there's no there's no one that needs your attention in the first hour of day because if you're not good within yourself and centered you're not going to be able to serve the world it's like what is that quote if if your cup's half empty you can't <laughs> butcher it. It's like the plane, the airplane. Uh, what do they say? Put your oxygen mask on first before you go help the person next to you. It's the same concept, right? You have to, we have to eliminate the things that are draining and fill ourselves up spiritually, mentally, physically, so we can go out and, and help the world. So airplane mode is a big thing for me in the morning, taking that time for myself and really centering myself before letting the day, you know, because <laughs> it's always every day we're going to be inundated with with different happenings. It's just it's just life. And and why would we want to make it that much more difficult for ourselves by allowing so much more excess noise that we just we don't need, you know? So, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. If I think of anything else, I'll do my best to potentially make another video. But I hope this is helpful to anyone who may need it on the other side. And it's a constant thing. Don't beat yourself up if you if you get somewhere and realize, damn, uh, I messed up this week, or I'm, I'm not there yet. It's a, you know, two steps forward, one step back. You know, it's, it's a process of, of growth and, and self-reflection and 
your own what works for you figure out what works so i hope some of these things work for you i uh, thank you for your time i thank you for listening to reflect part one got a new track coming out today i know this is gonna be on the internet so it's like not always gonna be today <laughs> but it's called idols with my buddy lvds from the netherlands he's a brilliant producer go check it out kind of talk about some of these things again in a different fashion and working on some other projects so stay tuned more is coming and thank you as always for listening i appreciate you bless you have a great day